Hundreds of sub-postmasters affected by the faulty IT scandal have spent years campaigning for justice, and this week marks some of the biggest moments since their fight began. Many of those wrongly prosecuted finally saw their convictions quashed after a long-awaited bill was passed, and the former post office boss, Paula Venels, broke a near-decade-long silence as she gave evidence at the inquiry. Our international business correspondent, Theo Leggett, has more on how it unfolded. Any words you before you go in, Mr Venels? After years of keeping a low profile, Paula Venels was thrust into the spotlight this week, and making her way through a scrum of cameras may have been the easy part. She started with an apology. I would just like to say, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this in person, <coughs> how sorry I am for all that sub-postmasters and their families and others have suffered as a result of all of the matters that the inquiries has been looking into for so long. There were tears as she was asked about the death of a sub-postmaster who took his own life after being financially ruined by the post office. And I imagine that, I'm sorry, <laughs> I imagine that I was probably... Just pause. Yes, OK. Try and compose yourself if you can, and then uh, continue your evidence, please. She defended her role. She may have been the boss, she said, but she wasn't responsible for everything, and she wasn't told everything either. You are not responsible for everything that happens underneath you. You have to rely on the advice of internal and external experts you still continue to live in a cloud of denial. By day three of hearing her evidence, the lawyers for the sub-postmasters were clearly unimpressed, and they went on the attack. I didn't know. Nobody told me. I can't remember. I wasn't shown this. I relied on the lawyers. I have tried to do this to the very best of my ability. It is extraordinary, though, isn't it? Because Cartwright King... Your external lawyers know all about it. Uh, and yet, um, you're saying that you didn't, the board didn't. I mean, this is la la land, isn't it? And the sub postmasters who were watching also seemed unconvinced. The crocodile tears did not faze me whatsoever. I was sat right at the front with my solicitor. And. Um, she, I just wish she'd answer the questions instead of going round and round in circles with the same answers. I think she's, she knows a lot more than what she's letting on. I think, basically, she's lying. After three days of testimony, Paula Venels left, flanked by police. The end of another major chapter in one of the biggest scandals the UK has ever seen. Theo Leggett, BBC News. Well, watching that with us now, former sub-postmasters Lee Castleton, Janet Skinner, and uh, very good morning to both of you. You were both in the inquiry yesterday and over the past three days. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lee, just give a sense, and it's worth saying, first of all, uh, Lee, you, you were made bankrupt yeah. after you lost a two-year battle with the post office. These uh, shortfalls, they thought, in your takings. Um, and, uh, J Janet, your story was that you were given a nine-month sentence in 2007... Yeah. ..over an alleged shortfall, and you served three months yes. in prison. Yes, and then did the rest of it on... Um, ..got out on good behaviour on tag. OK, so, Lee, you were in the room. I think we were actually looking... You, you were directly in the, in the image we can see of those yeah. people who are not there, listening and watching. How is it for you, listening to Paula Vennels giving her evidence? I think it's part of the process. I think it's really good for us to be there and, and to actually look at what's going on and um, see all the things, the things that are going on. I think it's part of the process that we need to see. You know, it needs to be open. It needs to be in the public eye and it needs to be in a way that people can question and look at what's going on. What did you make of her testimony? I, I mean... Probably both of us felt a lot of empathy because we've both been judged. You know, we both sat so in that know. lonely seat where yeah. where you're being looked at um, and picked at by by legal people. So that's yeah. interesting. On a human level, Janet, you sort of felt your heart went out to her to a certain it extent. Did. Okay. I mean, on Wednesday when she was like sat there giving evidence, and when it, well then when it began, and she did the apology and everything, I felt that was really really sincere. Mm. Um, but to be fair, the, I mean, the empathy that I had towards her was because she was just sat there and she's got all this hatred towards her. It must be the most intense feeling ever. 
Yeah. Um, but I think the following day it just went off the cliff, didn't it? I think she we could have been a lot more lost empathy. I think there's so many things that you look at emails that she wrote at the time um, that she's trying to explain away now, and she could have just been a bit more honest, really. Yeah, she had a perfect platform, didn't she, yeah. to, have, to have her say, to get her, her, her evidence heard and mm. be able to just open up about everything. And I don't think it was... And I think that, I that was something that caused a lot of maybe anxiety in the room. You know, a lot yeah. of people were, were hoping that she could have been more candid. Janet, what, what were the elements of what you heard that... I, I mean, you know this story because you yeah, lived do, it. Yeah. But what, what were there elements that you heard in her evidence that shocked you, even given what you've been through? No, not really. Um, I think... I think what I, the way I see it with her, with Paula Reynolds is, yes, she was the CEO, but, I mean, she just stonewalled the um, mediation because we was going through the mediation. We was both part of that group um, with Second Sight, so we was part of that investigation. And I think what shocked me the most is knowing how much they tried to stonewall it before it even... There was before so much it even hope there back went, yeah. in 2013 in the group, you know, with such a close group and there's so many people um, that were really, really living in hope that we would finally come to an end 10 years ago, that, that they were finally listening and that, that they really were going to do something yeah, to help us. Wasn't. And actually, when you read the emails from the time, which we now see, that are now ma a matter of public record, that was never going to happen. And at that point, she had the power she and it did. would have yeah. saved that decade. That decision yeah. really stood by her. I'm yeah. really struck, Janet, by going back to what you said just a moment ago. You were in prison... Yes. ..in the sure knowledge that you had done nothing wrong. Yes. OK? And yet, you were able to sit and watch Paula Vennels, who was the CEO of the post office, and have empathy. And, um, I mean, it speaks volumes for you that, you know, given what happened to you, that you're still able to think that way. Cos she wasn't in position when I went, was sent to prison. Mm. So I had a meeting with... a private meeting um, with Alan Cook after he gave evidence, and he offered um, the apology personally, cos he was in position when I was sent to prison. She, uh, Paula Venels was just coming into that job. So, I mean, I was sent to prison in February. She just started in the January. So there was, you could see, you were, in your head, you can see a separation, even yes. though the, it was the organisation. Yeah, was it's fault. the organisation. Yeah. It just people are scapegoating her and putting a lot of hatred mm. towards her, but actually forgetting who was in position when there was, when a lot of things There's happened. There's so many facets to everything that's going on and, and to look at it, if you step back and look at the people, the key players at the time, you know, um, the, the head of communications, the head of legal, all the different people that are interplaying this, this mm. kind of cover-up. Um, Which is sadly why accountability mm. is very tricky to put your finger on. Absolutely. And yeah. when you look at this battle for justice that has taken over hundreds of lives and, and the ripple effect for families and communities, when you think about the incremental realisation of what's been going on and the, and the fight for justice, where does this week sit within that? How significant I, does it I, I feel? Think for me, the amount of paperwork that's now been uncovered as to reasons why, yeah, the things so that were going today, on, it? it's yeah. now out there and people can actually judge the people that were making decisions mm -hmm. based on what they wrote at the time, not what's recollected now in, in, a, in a nice spin way, but actually what was written, which is shameful. It is absolutely shameful. A lot of people, uh, Lee and Janet, put this to both of you, a, a, a feeling that this should uh, be investigated as a criminal matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you've already made your minds up on that or wh wh where where do you sit with that, Janet? I mean, I was sent to prison. I was in charge of one post office. I mean, Lee was made bankrupt. He was in. He was running one post office. There is thousands, as they keep saying, they had. 11,500 post offices oh. that there was all accountable for. Somebody needs to take account for what's gone wrong. But it can't just be one person. No, this was groupthink. There was a lot of people involved in this and, and people that we haven't heard from yet, you know, the, from the, the, the shareholder, the government, from other people that are in and around that sort of group. I mean, one of the key things that Paula Venels did answer was that the shareholder was fully aware yeah. of what was going on. You know, and she had input into Royal Mail's flotation. You know, the IPO, the, the placing of the shares in, in the very instance that it was 
taken to a full float, she had an, a, a paragraph taken out of that document because it was unhelpful in actually floating the company. All of these things are, in my mind, something that needs to be really looked into. Are you, yeah. to any degree, Janet, able to breathe a little easier after these particular three days? Uh, because there was a lot of build-up and talk about her yeah. witness particularly. Are you able to breathe a little easier? Does it make much Not really. difference? Not really. I think, to be honest, I came from there yesterday and I think I was more mad mm. than anything. Mm. It's, I mean, it started off of me feeling sorry for her, but then I, it was just... I was just full of anger because I just think she just had that perfect opportunity mm. to open up, to protect herself, because she's had a lot of stuff, you know, chucked at her. I thought she would have opened up more and it, I found it quite disappointing. It's a huge stage, you know, she really mm. could have laid it out there. It's and still, the, in a way, the world, thankfully for the media, you know, the, the world is listening. And, there won't um, be another moment like that. No, but that. having no. said that, it, it is also a huge step mm. to ha yeah. actually hear from the person that has chosen not to do any interviews she or any reasons why. She took the on Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, you know, very like quickly, she... yeah. seeing you all together yeah. this week and hearing about the friendships that have built over mm. the past, well, beyond the last decade, yeah. how much of a comfort, how important have those relationships been? I think it's, it's being able to share with that person and that person knowing exactly what you've you gone through. Talk so you it. don't have to explain it. Yeah. It's quite a comforting part of yeah. the whole thing. We appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank you so oh, thank much. Thank you. Um, uh, Janet Lee, thank you. Thank you. Uh, time now is 8.25.